The anime tells the story of the Princess Yona, the unique daughter of the king, who lived in Kuka Kingdom, which is a small one surrounded by powerful nations. There is also her friend Hak, who has been her friend since childhood, and he is now one of the five powerful generals who protect the hero castle. In her 16th birthday, the king made a huge celebrating party. He invited all the kingdom and her cousin, Su Won, came as well. Yuna has always loved this guy, for being caring and kind to her after the death of the queen. Now as he saw him again, she feels love, but he ignores her. Later this day, her father explains she will never be able to marry her cousin because he's not as powerful as needed and he will not protect her in case if something happens. He simply does not want the scenario of the queen's murder to be repeated on his daughter. The princess got upset but didn't give up. At night, she goes to her father's room to convince him, but she gets shocked by seeing Suwon stab in the chest of her father and killing him. He reveals later it was his plan since he was a kid, and the death of the king is a long cherished desire, because Yona's father killed Suwon's father a long time ago. So this is a sort of revenge, and it is the only way to get the crown. A couple of minutes later, more soldiers enter the room, and since the princess saw everything, they must kill her now. Somehow she manages fleeing out, but they follow her, and luckily, Hack intervenes and gets informed by the death of the king. He starts attacking blindly, but alone, it is impossible to win a group of over 10 fighters. Surrounded with weapons and swords, it's seem for a moment that is the end, but Manso intervenes with his arrow and it strikes the soldiers so Hack manages fleeing with the princess. After hiding between the trees, they realize the castle is surrounded with guard so Minsu volunteers to distract the guards while the two others run out of the castle, but at the end he didn't make it out and got killed. In the mountains, and while the princess is taking rest, before they keep going, Hack recalls the day when he got hired to be Yona's bodyguard after protecting her from the obsessed Taijun, the second son of the Fire Tribe's General Kang. And he saw at that moment how the king is worried about his girl, and he promised him since then to be loyal and to protect Yona till his last breath. After this, Yona finally wakes up in fear and remembers all what happened, so she starts crying. Then she took a bath in the river, and after this, she starts looking for the hair clip which Su Wan gave it to her. After all what her cousin did, she can't forget the moment they shared together. Hack follows her and finds her surrounded with snakes, so he grabs her and while running to a safe place, he got beaten by one of them. In the next morning, the girl asks to know the destination they are going to, and the only safe place they can count on is Hack's home, the capital of Fuga. In castle, Suwon gathers the five lords of different tribes and informs them the king is dead, and Hack with the princess are missing. Now each leader must keep an eye on his tribe and watch in case if the two missing guys will go there. And since the king is dead and his girl is missing, the kingdom must crown Suwon to be the king. But the only one who doesn't approve is Mondu, because acknowledging someone as a king means at the same time acknowledging Hack may have killed the king and this didn't happen. In the Wind Tribe, the river has dried up due to the Fire Tribe who cut off water since the old man didn't approve crowning the new king. Now their only hope to get water is by the Martians, who pass every week by all the tribes. In the room, Hack's little brother passes out between Yona's arms and at the same time, the leaders get informed that the Martians were attacked on their way to the Wind Tribe, so now they do not have any possible source of water. One of the guards manages bringing a medicine for the little sick boy and Yona decides to stay by his side. Later at night, Hack informs his grandfather that in order to get water back from the fire tribe, he must approve Suwon becoming the new king. Hack thinks about leaving his home for its safety and the safety of its people and also he tells the old man to watch Yona and treat her like a member of the wind tribe. In the main gate of the tribe, Hack says his last goodbye to the guard but suddenly the princess shows up and stops him. She also wants to leave in order to save the kingdom. The grandfather sends them to meet a priest who has seen the kingdom of Kuka's future since ages of time. He has been said to live somewhere within the Wind Tribe's territory. So if the couple will be in any trouble, the priest will help them with no hesitation. On the other side, Kang Taejun, the second son of the Fire Tribe's general, could inform that the princess has been captured somewhere around the Wind Tribe territory. In haste, he gathers over 50 of his soldiers and attacks the couple who are looking for the priest in the mountain. They point poison arrows on the princess, but they get Hack injured instead because they knew he would shield her. And while he continues fighting other soldiers, the princess stands face to face with Taijun with a determined look and red hair just like Fireflame. She blames him for all the crimes he did to the Wind Tribe and the Martians. Suddenly, she sees her friend in danger, so she rushes to save him from falling. Taijun tried to stop in her by holding her hair, so she takes her sword and cuts her hair off. Then she jumps to save Hak, but unfortunately, they both fall into the valley. In shock, Taijun runs to inform Su Wan that the princess is dead. In the next morning, with the approval of the five tribes, the king Su Wan is crowned the Sky Tribe's 11th king of the kingdom of Koka. Somewhere else, Yona opens her eyes in a house where a boy called Yun is trying to wake her up. Hak is lying just beside her, but his situation is worse. 
Suddenly, another man comes in, and Yuna realized after a while that he is the priest they were looking for in the mountain. She spent the rest of the day with him while Yoon prepares effective medicines for Hack. In the next day, the girl wakes up and doesn't see her friend. She goes out to look for him and finds him right there discovering the place they are in. They sit down and talk as usual. Later that day, the girl meets the priest who reveals some bad news. He tells her life will create a storm that will shake the kingdom of Koka in a very bad way. He starts telling her the story of how the kingdom was created by four dragons, the same story she heard from her father when she was a child. The story says that a long time ago, the original king Hiyu was crimson dragon in a human form, living between humans, and the four other dragons loved him so much, so in order to protect him, they gave their blood to human warriors and granted them strength. And with their powers, they led their different tribes to protect Hiru and bring order to the kingdom. Days went on and the king grew tired of fighting and fell asleep forever. And by this, he ended the mission of the four dragon warriors. So they decided to leave their tribes to grow normally and they disappeared ever since then. So now, in order to get her kingdom back, the princess needs to find the four dragon warriors. In the next day, the princess gets offered a new haircut by Yun, and then she talks to the priest about taking the boy with them in their new journey. The boy doesn't like what he accidentally heard, so he faces the priest and asks why he wants to send him away, and he answers that he wants him to see how the world looks like outside. In tears, the kid recalls the first day they met in, seven years earlier. Yun was just a kid who barely afforded food, and the priest was a strange, nice, and cultured guy who gave golden pieces to different people for free. They both decided to stay together. The priest teaches the boy and shows him how to live and the kid take care of the man and watches over him. Now Yoon feels so sad for leaving his teacher and afraid of facing the world all alone. But after thinking about it wisely, he realized the necessity of discovering other places than the ones he lives in right now. So in the next morning, he packs what they might need, says goodbye to the priest and goes in a new journey with the princess and hack. In the next day, according to what the priest told them, they realized the four warriors do live separately, and pinning down their location is very hard. There is a clan which has lived in the top of the mountain, shrouded in mist. They do not belong to any tribe, and they don't like outsiders. The warriors can be there actually. On their way across the fire tribe, they discover the different people and they learn more about food and its sources. In the city, they realize how hard to walk and are covered by the guards watch everything. Then while they walk in the forest, Hack offers the girl a bow after realizing the necessity of teaching her how to protect herself. As they walk, Yoon decides to leave them behind while the princess tries to learn more. After a while, they find Yoon's clothes and a sound from behind the trees asks them to stay away from their lens. Hack manages removing the fog which was around, and by doing this, he discovers a group of men who are the white dragon protectors, and after recognizing the princess from her hair, and after knowing their identity, the guard decides to take them to the white dragon. As they arrive to the village, they see their friend Yoon in a cage, so the villagers free him. After a while, the elders tells them the story behind bringing them to meet the white dragon and why they worship the red hair. Ages ago, the first master whom the dragon had to protect was red hair, but since he fell in a long sleep, the dragon's blood is given to the next generation every time, waiting for the day when a new red-haired master in a need appears. So they need to make sure Yuna is the master they've been waiting for. So they call the white dragon out, and as soon as he sees Yuna, Yuna, he starts feeling something strange. He hears the voice of the four dragons ordering him to protect his master, and then he passes out. All what happens to him now confirms according to what his father said that Yona is his next master and he must protect her till his last breath. The girl explains her plan and that she needs to find three more dragon warriors. So the white dragon, who is called Kija, prepares himself for the journey he always waited for. As they walk, Kija reveals his talent of using the eye of his mind to detect the right way they have to follow in order to find the dragons, and as that the closest one is the blue dragon. As they move forward, they meet a group of bandits who intend to steal what they have, but luckily, Hack and the white dragon are so powerful and they defeat them so easily. But running fast and consuming too much energy during the fight opens Hack's wounds so he falls down and now he needs to take rest. In the middle of the night, and while they are all sleeping, Kija hears a low voice so he wakes up and discovers it's the princess training on how to use her arrow just like she does every night. And in the next morning, they get ready to keep walking, aiming to find the blue dragon. They walk in the forest till they arrive to a weird village where the unmarried men wear masks. The white Kija feels the presence of the blue dragon inside the village, so the princess makes out a lie to convince the leader to let them in, but he warns her that the village is like a maze and they should not let their curiosity take them away. 
But Yoon, who considers himself the smartest person in the room, doesn't listen and confidently takes his friends to discover the place and make a full map of it. As they walk inside the maze, the princess gets lost and a strange man attempts hurting her. But luckily, a masked guy saves her and takes her to meet the crew. And here, the white dragon recognizes his face. He's the blue dragon they are looking for, but he quickly flees away. Alone, the blue dragon recalls some moments when he was with his dead father who taught him not to use his superpower. The blue dragon's eyes paralyze the nerves of those who sees them. That is why they made him wear the mask since his first day. But at the same time, if the dragon uses them, his power will turn on on him and he will paralyze his body. It is double-edged sword and he must be aware. After the death of his father, the full curse had to pass to him. And one day, he could see the arrival of a group of bandits, so he took the risk and used his eyes. Unfortunately, what his father said was true and the boy almost died. That is why he never took off the mask again. To know more about the other dragons and for more episodes, wait for the next part. Until then, take care.